As a former EPFL student, it's always a pleasure to be here on site, especially in this very particular time of pandemic. And uh, I take this uh, conference organized by uh, uh, Tech for Trust as a resilience testimony in the fact that we can sustain uh, uh, against um, pandemic and uh, this makes me certain that we will have energy and skills to tackle with uh, increasing uh, cyber risks and also a global uh, lack of digital trust which we need to build a sustainable digital economy and uh, new startups as uh, we've seen today are contributing heavily to this digital trust this is uh, an extremely positive sign and I'm looking forward to hear from uh, the last round of startups how they can help us. So what is their solution or product? Uh, very shortly, of course, uh, and uh, going uh, really to the business and uh, so it is understandable for everybody. And uh, at the same time, who is the team who will lead them to success? So uh, let's start now with a startup. Uh, I am here for Francesca. And uh, let's start with uh, Binaire. So uh, the floor is yours. Hello, everyone. Uh, I hope you can hear me. Uh, my name is Andre Kostin, and I'm CEO and co-founder of Binare IO, where we develop automated solutions for IoT cybersecurity. It's a B2B software as a service platform. There are 50 billion more uh, or more devices in the world, and it's a multi-billion dollar market. Uh, and in fact, more than 80% of routers or network equipment have at least one cybersecurity vulnerability. And this normally lies within the firmware, which is one of the weakest links um, in these devices. Therefore, Dinari develops uh, deep tech cybersecurity solutions that enables customers and partners to scan the binaries of the firmwares for cybersecurity issues. Uh, this helps to have a more uh, visualization on the supply chain of their IoT platforms and devices and also be compliant with any upcoming regulations or cybersecurity standards such as ETSI 303645. Our team, uh, we started last year with a team of two co-founders, myself, CEO and co-founder, and my CTO, uh, Vadim Bogudan, as a co-founder. Currently, we are a team of eight, uh, bringing more than 40 years of combined professional uh, experience uh, worldwide. We speak 10 uh, languages, therefore we are uh, really uh, open to tackle international challenges, international markets. We have a focus on European markets and North Americas. Uh, uh, the team is underpinned by visionary experts who have uh, developed the firmware as a service uh, first in the world, and uh, we have been presented our research at top international uh, conferences uh, that are acknowledged by top uh, experts in cybersecurity. We are Binari IO and uh, hope to be part of Tech for Trust uh, program. Thank you so much. Thank you very much. So, uh, and now the second startup. So good afternoon, everyone, uh, and thank you, Tech Valley, for this uh, for this event. I am Arnaud Gardin, in charge of business development for Moabi. Uh, we are based in Paris. Uh, some of us are traveling, so 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 no, sorry not not to be with you today. Um, so as you know, software is everywhere. IoT connected vehicles, a uh, new project of Industry 4.0. So the question in terms of cybersecurity is, how do you validate the security uh, of a new software or a new product. Um, so how do you select a product based on cybersecurity criteria? And basically, how do you anticipate uh, enough uh, weaknesses and vulnerabilities so, so that they do not cascade to customers? Uh, we know that source code analysis, uh, self-diagnosis or manual pen testing are, are good. But they are not enough. They do not scale. Uh, they may be biased, uh, or um, they, you, you need the source code. So this is why we developed Moabi. So Moabi, it's a SaaS or an appliance platform that delivers automated security audits. 
The point is to assess cybersecurity posture of any type of software without source code. Uh, so for various architecture from ARM, Arch64, uh, and so on, MIPS, even MIPS and Intel, uh, to various language and technologic environment. Um, so the, the, the platform will provide key metrics. So for instance, presence of malware, CVEs, zero days, defense in death, et, et cetera compliance uh, with a standard of codes um, and remediation reports. So the point is to pinpoint exactly uh, the gaps with, with uh, standard best practice. So um, the objective for us is really to automate and expand audits to basically all any type of software. And so we make sure that they enforce uh, best practices in terms of DevSecOps, SSDLC, and product security. Uh, and we help our customers to uh, secure third-party products based on this cybersecurity criteria. Uh, today, we work with uh, a European leader in the defense in industry, for instance, to uh, um, improve uh, the cybersecurity of satellite, railways, system, or some other specific defense uh, system. We work with banks, for instance, in the UK or the automotive industry in France um, and, uh, uh, and some insurance companies in France as well. Uh, our CEO is a veteran from the automotive industry. Uh, I've been working uh, in partnership uh, in the security and telecom industry and our CTO has developed the engine the reverse engineering engine of our platform uh, as being the director of product security at Salesforce uh, for five years. Um, so we are all delighted uh, to join Tech, Tech for Trust acceleration pro program and to join, of course, the uh, Swiss uh, cyber ecosystem. Thank you. Thank you very much, Jonathan. And now the third startup, PhotoCert and Pascale Saviano. Welcome. Thank you. So it was uh, 1827 when pictures were invented. And shortly after, phrases like uh, a picture never lies started to be used. But today so many pictures are fake. Uh, fake news, fake merchandise on websites. And I also have friends that have had issues with the fake pictures on uh, dating apps. I'm Pasquale Saviano, founder at PhotoCert, and the PhotoCert establishes and certifies the authenticity of pictures and videos, enabling a trustworthy remote digital inspection. Our product can be really useful in many verticals. We are currently working with insurance companies, automating the processes like uh, claim and underwriting, and also helping to prevent fraud and enhancing customer satisfaction. The core team is based in London, and thanks to our complementary skills, we work together quite well. When we don't work, we play board games. Our CEO is the one that usually wins, and he has more than 15 years of experience working with the corporates and also with the startups. Marco is in charge of uh, tech, and uh, he also has a strong background with uh, computer vision and uh, deep learning algorithms. Um, we also have uh, 10 software developers from more than five different countries. And uh, what uh, I want to add is that uh, I'll be super happy to show you our product in action and to prove to you that thanks to PhotoCert, once again, a picture never lies. Thank you. Thank you, Pasquale. All right, so um, we look forward to, to see you during the program. And now we, we can move to the next startup. I think the, yeah, the banner. Yeah. So privacy one and uh, welcome, Pan. Juan, what, uh, how should we pronounce your, your name? Uh, it's actually Juan. Okay. 
Pan Shuan. Shuan. Okay. Yes. Okay. Welcome. Uh, yes. Thank Pan you. Shuan. Yes. Thank you. As we are entering this digitization economy, uh, it becomes really convenient to meet your doctors online or uh, send a voice command to your Tesla or let your kids play with Alexa at home. But all these type of innovative technology, including many we have seen, great startup we have seen in previous sessions, based on capturing highly sensitive personal data. So Privacy One is a mission to tackle the top trust issues uh, while every business is trying to use personal data to power their future growth. In the past, we have built two lines of product. The first one is um, a complete uh, one-stop shop for your compliance work that includes, for example, cookie consent management, governing of your procedure or uh, policy management and so on. Secondly, we have built a, uh, a security product that combines the cyber security concept or model zero trust into privacy protection uh, so that it can shrink your business uh, security perimeter from previously um, based on an application or on network or on VTC down to a very granular level, data, data level. So it's a very data centric solution. So it encrypts all your personal data based on different personal keys uh, for data segregation. And it also ensures um, very granular data access uh, by authentication to service and user accounts. So our team today consists of three tech, three legal, and one sales person. Uh, I'm the tech uh, uh, founder here. So uh, previously, I worked at Spotify, building the privacy team for protecting 100 millions of users. I founded the privacy one to uh, make sure the same level of protection can be accessed not just by enterprise, but also uh, small, medium-sized businesses. Uh, Philip Janssen, who is uh, heading up the legal team, he's uh, previously worked at uh, security police uh, in Sweden and also serves as a DPO of uh, Klarna, another uh, FinTech unicorn in Sweden. Uh, we have our sales um, VP, uh, Steve Badger. He interestingly, he actually came from a competitor of ours. He saw the value at early stage that we are combining privacy and uh, security together into one solution and try to operationalize privacy. And he has, uh, he brings us uh, 20 plus years of B2B sales experience. So if you have any question about uh, privacy protection or data security, come to talk to us. Thank you. Thank you very much. That was very clear and convincing, at least for me. And now, uh, let's welcome Jeremy Le Petit from Retrieve. Jeremy, Hello. the floor is yours. Hello. Glad to be with you today. Uh, I'm Jeremy Le Petit, uh, and uh, I represent the Retrieve company that I lead between uh, Paris and, uh, and Geneva. Uh, maybe you know, but payment industry is in revolution. Uh, there will be 1,093 billion digital transactions in 2023. Then um, all the players want a piece of the cake to make more money, uh, but no one, no one wants to change the recipes to make this flow a source of financing for the great challenge of our time. Um, change, the, change the recipe, change the paradigm, inside an industry at the top of asymmetry between impact and responsibility. That's the premise of Retrib. Uh, with Retrib, we are creating the missing link in a chain consumption that wants to be more and more responsible. But Retrib is not just a payment system. It's a new model of value distribution. With Retrib, we are rethinking the payment to build a more sustainable world. By the way, um, Retrib uh, is the first financial institution that decide to link its business performance with its social contribution. We redistribute 33% from the network fees to finance social and environmental projects. To do this, we tokenize the transaction. We are creating a network of stable multi-asset, the stable trip, that follows the user local money value. And of course, we will deploy it on Phantom, the infrastructure protocol, as the most scalable, fastest, most robust, and most sustainable infrastructure blockchain actually. The digital assets become the payment asset, and the merchant receive each 
72 hours the transaction block balance in fiat money direct, directly by bank transfer. So when you control the transaction, you control the fees, and then you control the redistribution. Actually, uh, there are already 15 full-time people on the project. Um, uh, personally, I am the serial entrepreneur, professor of blockchain to university and business school. And, um, you know, uh, a big part of my job consists to find the people who are the more smarter and more talented than me. Uh, and we uh, just recruit, uh, recruited uh, four new developers and legal regulatory specialists. And um, my co-founder, Stephanie, comes from BNP Paribas. She, uh, she was head of mission at the inspection banking. Uh, she was in the earth of reactor. And uh, her expertise, her vision are essential to the project. And, um, and another co-founder, Quentin, is uh, also my brother. He is designer from Ecole Normale Supérieure de Design. He thinks the product should become easy to use, scalable, and make the blockchain invisible. Um, our partner and CTO, Najib, uh, is graduate from HSC, and he has also come from 42, you know, maybe the coding school launched by uh, Xavier Niels, the founder of Free. Um, you know, all the members of the Red Hill team have the same co -com commitment uh, um, to change the rules of the game. Thank you. Perfect. Thank you. Great team. And uh, I will pass now uh, the word uh, to the last startup in this round. So let's welcome Romain Lapin from Code Scoring. Hello, everybody. Uh, can you hear me? Hope so. So uh, my name is Roman, and I am technical product manager and partner at Profiscope. Um, I I think nobody here present would argue that software is still eating the world. It's not a, just a catchphrase. And it's a new reality that every business has to face. And um, let's be honest, the problem is that not every business understands what's inside their code. Uh, they don't know what it consists of, what it depends on. There are many, many questions around it. Is it safe? Is it good? What open source components are used and what risks they impose? How many people do we need to support this software? How many people do we need to improve it to make uh, to get it to the next level? So uh, to answer those questions, uh, we're building code scoring. It's a complex all-in-one solution for software composition analysis, quality intelligence, and team transparency for businesses. Uh, we give our clients a full understanding of different aspects of their code. Uh, by delivering rich uh, interactive reports uh, based on our uh, unique, I should say, code mining algorithms and created databases. Today, our team consists of 10 plus people with decades of combined experience in building software and managing, managing development teams. Both our founders come from academia and have a deep knowledge in computer science, natural language processing, uh, machine learning, and high-load automation systems. Uh, our development team, uh, all located in Russia, has outstanding experience in managing big data streams and building modern complex uh, systems using Python, Golang, and JavaScript. Uh, in general, as a team, we strive to make software more transparent and understandable for its owners and its users. And at the same time, we want to make it, um, we want to make the development process more robust, safe, and pleasant for all the developers. We are glad uh, for the opportunity to, to be here. So thank you. Thank you so much, and uh, no, 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 no applause, because a big surprise, <laughs> there are two startups that uh, couldn't make it to the, the round before, so we have the pleasure uh, to have here with us uh, also David from Collect ID. David, the floor is yours. Sorry. Hello, everyone. Uh, hopefully you're not too tired. Um, yeah, we couldn't make it due to a COVID case in our near uh, surrounding. And you know how it works these days. We have to be careful. So we decided to join virtually. 
Um, I'm David, I'm one of the co-founders and CEO of Collect ID, and we are the truth behind the product. Um, almost $2 trillion worth of fake products are faked every year, and consumers face the risk of buying these counterfeited products instead of authentic ones, especially online and especially on secondary markets. We solve this problem by combining blockchain and NFC technology, and this is how it works. So um, products get equipped with a unique NFC tag that contains a unique identity, and then we recreate this product as a digital twin on the blockchain, so it's represented as an non-fungible token. And this combination is truly tamper-proof and removes the financial incentive of producing counterfeited products in large scale. Users can simply use their smartphone, tap the product to identify if it's authentic or if it's fake. We have an award team winning team. Um, myself, I have a background in business administration, studied in St. Gallen and in Stanford, and have more than seven years experience in business development and venture building. Um, my technical co-founder, Jeremy, is a Drew expert for decentralized blockchain technologies, uh, worked um, for several startups in that obviously very young field, but still brings a lot of experience. Um, the further co-founders, Sergio, he's an expert in fashion, um, more than 15 years experience in the fashion industry, and Dominic, who is compl completing the team from the finance background. Even more important, um, we are a team of 10 people, 50-50 on the business and on the technology side. Uh, all our software development is happening in Switzerland, so it's Swiss-made software, which I think is essential when it comes to, uh, to trust. It can be a, a huge advantage to have the team here, to have it on site. And we are very proud and very happy if we make it to the Tech for Trust Accelerator program. So enjoy the rest of the day and thank you very much. Thank you so much, David. And uh, maybe last one. Okay, thank you so much, David, again, <laughs> from Condensation. And uh, thanks a lot for joining us. The floor is yours. Yeah, thank you very much for having me remotely here with you. Um, unfortunately, the, the crash of my son was hit by a first respiratory disease wave this year. So I'm uh, happy to introduce a conversation today to you. And it seems like we have a uh, yeah, David, the connection, connection issue here. Somebody in the middle of the connection or yeah. passing <laughs> packets manually. Man in the middle. So, should we try to connect him again? Yeah, exactly. Maybe cutting the camera, at least listening to the speech. Okay, try again. <laughs> Thank you very much. So my name is David Feyerabend, and I'm happy to present Condensation DB to you today. Uh, I hope you can hear me now. Yeah, go. Yes, looks good. So uh, what is Condensation DB about? Um, today, more and more applications deal with very sensitive data. And within those applications, data is shared, people collaborate on the data in parallel, and it's stored somewhere in the cloud. And the site as well as a huge tech stack to be managed by the developer. And ConversationDB tackles those too. It is an end-to-end -end encrypted and really highly synchronization efficient database. It can even be used in a distributed way. But let's look at how those two challenges are solved. First of all, data is fully encrypted with conversation. Even if a server gets compromised, there's no usable data to be found on it. So this means that conversation can process data updates on the server side without the the server needs an encryption key, and this removes this really crucial attack vector. On the other hand, realizing such applications normally requires a huge tech stack containing, for example, core data system, the encryption level, uh, synchronization, backup, and so forth. And this requires a lot of maintenance work. And with condensation, all of this is built into the system natively by the underlying design of our technology. So we see a lot of application options here. And we're looking forward to, to collaborate with you on these and with the partners in Tech for Trust. Um, 
I would say the secret of our team is that we are quite diverse team. So we have really members that have PhDs in computer science and years of application development experience. Uh, we have people with business backgrounds and startup experience, and also people that come from the management uh, of software developments. Um, furthermore, we are always very inter interested in learning new things. And uh, whenever we face challenges that we have not experienced by now, we dig into them and try to find answers. So thanks again for, for having us at Tech for Trust, and we're looking forward to um, join you on this journey. Thank you so much. Thank you so much, David. And now you can make a big round of applause, please. Thank you. OK, thanks. Um, uh, just a couple of words because I know we are running a little bit late, but um, um, I said it a little bit this morning because uh, I found the debate uh, stimulating and also the workshop, but uh, now I'm, I mean, I'm even more encouraged, let's say, to see the world with uh, these eyes because uh, uh, first of all, congratulations to, to all of them, to all the team because uh, um, I mean, they're, they're part of the program and uh, um, more so is because uh, they're really trying basically uh, to solve with innovative ideas uh, some of the challenges that we've been talking about from a very practical approach and also was very happy to see how diversified let's say uh, the type of solutions uh, that they are trying to come up with and i really hope that also thanks to the uh, to the trust valley and to the program they will be i mean connected to a wider network to have even a bigger impact but because that's exactly what basically we need. And so I, I have to say that it was uh, very good to be part of this closing session because uh, uh, the work from here, it's a little bit better. So thanks a lot and uh, good luck uh, to all of them.